Hey everyone, Brandon here with Galloway Precision. Today we're going to go over the installation of our newest trigger, and that is the Lionheart. Uh, obviously taking its namesake from Richard the Lionheart, who uh, squashed the uh, incursions during the Third Crusade. And uh, was with his man all the time. Um, for the SR series of pistols. Uh, the SR-40C, SR-9C, SR-40, SR-9, and SR-9E. Uh, while they have discontinued this pistol, um, there are hundreds of thousands of these out there. Many of you own them. Uh, if you can pick one up on the secondary market for a good, uh, a good solid performing gun for under 400 bucks, you can't really go wrong with an SR. All right, so tools you're going to need. You need your bench block, 332nd punch, 116th or 2 millimeter punch and your brass and polymer hammer. So let's go ahead, hold on. Having some sort of bodily function issue here. So let's go ahead and lock and clear the weapon. And then we will go ahead and begin tear down and install. So we are visually and physically empty. Let's go ahead and take your 332nd and push your tape down out. Now there's two ways to do this. Most of you will go out of your way to point out the manual. And all you gotta do is shut that down, the slide will come off, that is correct. Or you can do it that way as well. I'm just so used to striker fire, it's coming apart that way. That's the way I normally end up doing it. I'm not gonna need the slides, we'll set that off to the side. Take your bench block, flip it upside down. Most of these you can push out by hand. So you're gonna push out that front one. Next will be the locking block. Lastly will be, no, that's the trigger pivot. Nope, that's the locking block pin, that's the trigger pivot. <clears throat> all right, so all our locking block pins are out. The next thing you're gonna do, this is gonna be the tricky part. This has to be at about, this is all the way up, your, this is your projector by the way. All the way up for function, all the way down uh, to strip. Now, you need to have it right about there. And if you try and push it out while it's all the way up, you'll notice, all the way down, you'll notice. So you gotta wiggle it around until you find the sweet spot. And then the fire control unit pin will just pop right out. So we can go ahead and pull up that. Pull our locking block out. It all comes out as one unit, all right? So our trigger pivot's in the locking block. I'll go ahead and take this spring off and set it down because it's going to fall off and that thing's hard to find. So what I like to do, it doesn't matter which way you put the pin in or out, but I like to take it from the side that's got the slide lock on it so I can take that out of the way and go ahead and remove that. Once your locking block's off, you can take your 2 millimeter or 1 16th and just push uh, through your stock pin, your, your stock trigger, I should say, and take that pin out. That will remove it from the trigger connector. All right, so then we go ahead and just take that, and like we've done with our other ones, we can use our bench block initially, get it started, and turn it over and give it a tap. Take your two millimeter and make sure it is, what's Brandon's favorite word, equidistant. You don't want it sticking too far out one side or the other because it can bind up in the frame. So make sure we're equidistant. Now, we're ready to put it back together. I mean, this is a real straightforward trigger change. The most difficult part is going to be not losing that spring, but also putting in your slide lock. Now you'll notice you've got a cutout in your locking block here, right there, a little V-shape. You got this little nipple on the end here. That's how it actuates and moves is on, on the inside. You can see the cutout. So that actually goes just like that, okay? And that's why that pin's important because your pivot pin, so it keeps that locked in place. 
you can see right there that's where it's leaning up against so that it can go you want it up in that little cutout right there when it moves all right so now that we've got that back on you're gonna hold as much as you can without knocking it out of place that out of the way push your pivot on through all right get a little tappy tap make sure it's equidistant on both sides and put our little locking spring back in the spring is very important if you don't put this back in your locking block when you go to fire the first time the whole front end of this is going to come off It all goes back in together, and you'll see you got the guide there for this rail on the fire control unit. You got these two guides here for the back rails. All right, so slide it all on in there. All right, now the first one we're gonna put back in, I always like to put my front locking block pin back in so it keeps the locking block somewhat down. And then I will take, when you go to reinstall your pins in the locking block, the longer pin, it's got the cut further down so it's got more here, it goes on top. And push it in until you hear it click. Actually, I just told you wrong. It goes on the bottom and then the short one goes on top. It's easy for me to get them confused, pulling these apart all the time. So, long one, middle, short one, top. And you'll hear it. You'll know you're in the right spot because you'll hear it click in place. So, I'll show you I'm not a complete idiot. If you go to put it in the top like I just did and you don't get that click or it stops right there, just put that pin in the bottom. You'll hear it. Click. Click. All right, now we're ready to put our fire control unit back in. And this is going to match up to the hole cutout. Now, as you can see, I'll put it in backwards for a second so you can see at the flat end is at the rear round into the front so if you try and force it in any other way it's just not gonna go all right so get it all lined up you want the curvature just like that that piece back and you'll know you have it in correctly when your ejector goes all the way up and all the way down now we're ready to put the pistol back together and do a functions check go ahead and put your take down in Making sure your ejector is in the up position, because if you are like anybody else and have removed your uh, mag safety, um, you go to test fire, or uh, uh, correction, you go to functions check, nothing's going to happen, because when that's down, you get nothing. Purposely makes the trigger dead, so that you can't load a live round while you're field stripping. Alright, so... Put the safety on, try and pull the trigger, nothing happens. Safety off, keep your finger off the trigger blade, try and pull back, nothing happens. Go ahead and put your finger across the trigger blade of the line heart, pull, rack, release, pull, and that's it. Functions check is over, everything is back together correctly, and I think you're going to be very, very happy with this nice little flat face uh, for the SR series. Of pistols uh, I like it but you get a nice built-in over travel stop at the back as soon as it breaks the trigger stops um, pretty much removed all the pre-travel I mean as soon as, as soon as you're applying pressure you're already at the wall you're going so it is a much shorter stroke compared to stock i think a lot of you out there that own this uh, even like i said if it's just your truck gun your trunk gun always always helps be faster on and off the trigger um which in turn lends to accuracy so on and so forth 
So that's going to wrap this one up, guys. Uh, if you got any questions, feel free to email me at tech. That's Tango Echo Charlie Hotel at GallowayPrecision.com. Be sure to follow us on social media here on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe below. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, GunStreamer, and Vimeo. And as always, be safe, be accurate, and God bless.